In this video, we are going to talk about geometrical isomerism in octahedral complexes. Now, just as we saw in square planar complexes, geometrical isomerism in octahedral complexes can also significantly impact a compound's behavior like biological activity, chemical reactivity and other physical and chemical properties. So, to appreciate this, let's look at an interesting compound here. So, here we have the cis and the trans forms of an octahedral complex which is COEN2Cl2. EN here is ethylene diamine which we all know is a bidentate ligand. Now, because of the way in which the ligands are arranged, the cis isomer was found to be much more soluble in water as compared to the trans isomer. And this is because as you can see in the cis isomer, the chloride ligands are adjacent to each other and this increases the polarity of the molecule and that means it can interact more effectively with polar solvents like water, correct? On the other hand, if you look at the trans isomer, the chloride ions are placed opposite to each other. The dipole moments cancel out and this decreases the overall polarity. And this decreased polarity means the trans isomer is not able to interact with polar solvents like water as effectively as the cis isomer. And this makes the trans isomer generally less soluble. This solubility difference is very important when we talk about drug formulations. And this is because the drug's ability to dissolve affects its absorption in the body. How easily does the drug get absorbed by the biological system? So clearly you can see that when one isomer is more soluble than the other, this property can influence on how effectively the drug performs in the body, right? Alright, so let's go ahead and explore geometrical isomerism in different octahedral complexes. Now we know that in a typical octahedral complex, we have a metal that is surrounded by six ligands. And for such a complex to exhibit geometrical isomerism, as you can see here, the ligands must be arranged in such a way that we get unique and distinct spatial arrangements, correct? So based on this, let's look at the first type of octahedral complex, which is MA4B2. Now here again, this is a general form of how we write a formula for an octahedral complex. Remember that we haven't taken into account the charge of the complex because that would depend on the oxidation state of the metal, the type of the ligands and the charge of the ligands, right? So to be more specific, we can write N plus or minus to indicate that the complex could be charged or not. But anyway, even the other form, the general form of MA4B2 is also acceptable. Alright, moving forward, a common example of this type of an octahedral complex is CONH34Cl2+. And this type of complex exhibits two geometrical isomers, one cis and one trans. In the cis isomer, you can see that the chloride ligands are adjacent to each other and in the trans isomer, they are opposite to each other. Okay, now let's extend this a little further. In this example, ammonia is a monodentate ligand, right? It has only one donor atom. But what if we replace this A ligand with a bidentate ligand? So in that case, we would need two such ligands to satisfy the coordination number 6. So if we replace the ammonia ligands here with let's say EN, a neutral bidentate ligand, ethylene diamine, we again get only two geometrical isomers. And what do they look like? So let's remove all the ammonia ligands and simply replace them with two ethylene diamine ligands okay so we would have one ethylene diamine here and one ethylene diamine here so this is the cis isomer and the trans isomer again we would have en here and here so as you can see when we replace the ammonia ligands with ethylene diamine here again we get two geometrical isomers which are cis coen2 cl2 plus and trans coen 2 cl 2 plus all right let's look at the next type of octahedral complex so the next type is ma3b3 let's include the charge here as well now a common example of ma3b3 is co ns3 thrice no2 thrice okay so we have three ammonia ligands and three nitro ligands here now this particular type of complex is shown to exist in two different geometrical isomers as we can see here. But we don't typically call them cis and trans isomers because you see they can be considered adjacent or not. 
For example, if you look at this isomer, you have ammonia ligands at the transposition, opposite to each other. But you also have an ammonia ligand that is adjacent to the other one, right? So this isomer does not typically fall in the trans isomer category or this one in the cis isomer category. And for the same reason, we have a different name here. So the complexes that exist in this fashion are called facial isomers where three identical ligands occupy three adjacent positions and this type of isomer where the three identical ligands are located along a meridian this type of isomer is called meridional isomer so octahedral complexes of the type ma3b3 again has two geometrical isomers but here they are not cis and trans but they are facial and meridional isomers so to recap, if the three identical ligands occupy the adjacent positions at the corner of an octahedron, we get a facial isomer. You can see that this is essentially the face of an octahedron. And on the other hand, when the three identical ligands are positioned around the meridian of an octahedron, we get a meridional isomer. By meridian or the meridional position, we mean that all the three ligands are arranged in the same plane that passes through the center of the octahedron. Now remember folks, the facial and meridional type of isomers is found only in this type of octahedral complex, which is MA3B3. We need to have three identical ligands of one type and three identical ligands of the other type. So let's move forward. Let's look at one last type of octahedral complex. In the next type of octahedral complexes, we have MA2B2C2, three different types of ligands A, B, C, each present in pairs, right? Now here various cis and trans configurations are possible. So let's take the example of this specific complex here, chromium complex. Now the first isomer, in the cis isomer, we will have all the ligands adjacent to each other, right? So how does that look like? Something like this where the nitro, ammonia and chloride ion ligands are all adjacent to each other. Now in the trans isomer, we can have one of these ligands opposite to each other, correct? So let's take the nitro group and place them at the trans position or opposite to each other and arrange the other ligands accordingly. And when we do that, we get this trans isomer. Now similarly, we can have ammonia also opposite to each other. In that case, we would get this trans isomer, correct? And by the same logic, even chloride ions should be able to come opposite to each other, giving us another trans isomer. So I don't have space here to show that. So let me make them smaller and get some space here. All right. So we get this trans isomer. The chloride ions are opposite to each other, just as the ammonia ligands and the nitro ligands were, right? So here we got one cis and three trans isomers, right? So is this it? Is there a possibility to get any more isomers? Let's check once again, okay? Now, obviously, in the cis isomer, we cannot have more combinations here. All the ligands are adjacent to each other. But in the trans isomers, if you notice, we can see that even though one of the ligands is opposite to each other in each of these trans isomers, the other ligands are all adjacent to each other. So the chloride ion ligands are adjacent to each other and so are the ammonia ligands here. Similarly, in these cases as well. So that means we have one trans combination that is missing here where all the ligands are opposite to each other, right? How does that look like? Let's see. Okay, so if this is an isomer, an all trans position would mean that we have to remove our ammonia from here and place it here, right? So that way ammonia ligands would be opposite to each other. Similarly, the nitro group would also become opposite to each other. So this is an all trans isomer. And that's it. I don't think you can get any more unique spatial arrangements in this type of complex. We get a total of five geometrical isomers with one cis and four trans isomers. Now let's try an interesting activity. What if we replace one of these ligands with a birentate ligand? Suppose we replace A with, let's say, a birentate ligand like this, AA. In that case, do we get 1 cis and 4 trans isomers or do we get more or less isomers? So I want you to pause the video here. Try giving this a shot, okay? Try drawing out the structures of MAAB2C2 and see how many geometrical isomers we would get here. 
all right so pause the video and try giving it a shot so as you can see here when we replace one of the ligands with a bidentate ligands we end up getting three geometrical isomers one cis and two trans now this is kind of obvious if you think about it because you see a bidentate ligand would end up restricting the number of unique spatial arrangements we would have right now here you can see that in cis isomer all the ligands are adjacent to each other but look at the trans isomers in one we have the ligands b opposite to each other and in the other we have ligands c opposite to each other we cannot have the bidentate ligand aa opposite to each other so that means we would also not get an all trans isomer right and this is why the number of geometrical isomers in this type of complex maab2c2 would be 3 so folks that's it for this video I hope you had a lot of fun looking at how to figure out the geometrical isomers in various octahedral complexes.